Morning, windmill. Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey well, everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't watched before, I'm Tony. I uh, farm here with my dad and a couple hired guys in Northeast Montana. And uh, we're in the middle of hay season. We actually finished swathing today, but we got a lot of baling to do yet. So, had a breakdown yesterday, well, last night about midnight with the baler. Actually, I ran out of twine and then it got tangled up because I really don't know. And we shoot a pin on one of the sprockets on the nodder system. So, today, kind of cobbled it together, waiting on parts. I think we'll get going baling. So, here we go. Well, this baler is the case 438XL. It is uh, XL, which means extra long chamber. And because of that, it makes heavier bales than the standard. Uh, the chamber squeezes with hydraulic pressure around the two bales that are already created in the back or already made. And as that bale is formed, it keeps that back pressure and that's how it packs the bale tighter and adds more weight to it. So the longer chamber, the heavier bales we can make. The 434 means four by three, and the last four is the series number. We had a 431 before we got this baler, and that was the 18, 19 year old baler compared to this one, two or three years old now. So we got a fiber stacker behind it. Fiber is a company that builds a dash trailer we have as well. Uh, it'll stack the three bales up vertically so we can just come cruise along, grab them, and load them on a truck. Don't have to do any stacking in the field. That is a stack that it'll make. And that's pretty handy, just come grab those spears. So the tractor is a Case H Magnum 370 CVT. So instead of a power shift, it's a CVT transmission, which is, this is our forward speed adjustment and backward speed adjustment as far as that goes, I guess. Um, really nice for this because we can idle back on the end of the field and not slow down our ground speed, but slow down our PTO RPM so that we don't put extra strain on that PTO shaft when it's got an angle. So that's the setup we're running. It works really good. Currently we've got about 4,250 bales on this baler. It's a pretty new baler. Last year with the drought, we hardly put any hay through it. Uh, this is a stacker screen, current average for the field weight of these bales is 1,450 pounds. And the last bale that rolled through here was 1,375. So we're on the end of the field that had a little more hail damage. So we're losing grain weight out of the bale and that's making the bales lighter. So just a little bit left here, maybe 30 acres and then we'll be jumping into the oats. Well, I finished up the barley that swathed here at home and ended up with almost right around two bales per acre. Started out better than that, but the hail in that corner of the field kind of cut down on the yield. And we'll start sprinkling once I got a few old bales made. So, early to bed, not too much rain, but I suppose by seven in the morning we'll be able to go again. We'll see. Morning, windmill. All right, let's go. Uh, Give this baling a shot again. Shut the valve to, ooh, coffee's running down my arm. Shut the valve to back this thing up so those rear tires don't steer. That causes a problem. You never get the thing backed up straight then. Hit the hydraulics here and get that cylinder tight. We get some wheels. Oh, uh, no, it's working. It's going sideways on me. not turning that they're supposed to in the mirror. I don't know what's going on. Still got that part figured out. There we go. It's hot. 
it's windy and it's dry which means combines are going to move soon hopefully faster than a grasshopper there's like grasshoppers like all over the yard here there's nothing to eat on the concrete there's tony out there bailing bailing uh oat hay today bailed quite a bit last night from the looks of it from the barley that's out over there I'm working on combines Nacho's coming to help me here in a bit busy Saturday oh and I think we're done with the swather at least for a while maybe the year making some pretty nice heavy bales Oh, look at how nice and green that is. Well, we got a little bit done on the combines today. Found that guy there. And number two right there. Checking gearboxes, transmission, changed oil. I haven't really had a camera on because I've been bouncing back and forth so much. A lot of walking in and out of the shop. Plus, it's taken me a little bit longer because I came from a farm running John Deere. Don't tell anybody. But now I'm learning where everything's at on these combines, on case. Um, I am familiar with Macdon because we did run a Macdon head, but we do have some more work to do on the Macdons. But we'll wait till Monday. I'm gonna go home. Well, good morning. Happy Monday. Might be hard to spot for me. It's hard to see him in the camera lens, but out there is Tony bailing some oat hay and down there's Warren videoing me on top of the combine getting ready to crawl into the bin to check the gearbox and the bubble up auger where's your safety harness uh, I left it safety harness is in my other pants pocket okay. sorry I forgot that and uh, I do have my safety shoes on right they've got traction so that's what the handrail is for yes safety third first safety first there we go. So, anyway, Tony's been having a few issues with the baler, breaking a bunch of shear bolts, but uh, we'll let him deal with that. We'll keep picking on combines, get these ready to go. So, well, these are the gearboxes that I'm trying to check the oil in. So, showing a little bit of wear on the flighting, but not sharp. That's nice. I don't have to worry about cutting myself. So, we'll see where we're at. Always use your trusty fit all to save yourself trips up and out of the combine and back down to the ground and back out. Whoop. She's full. Said as long as it comes out of that hole, of this plug, that's the level you're supposed to be. So that's what the book says. So, I, I came from a farm with deer combines. I'm, I'm learning a lot, and so I have to keep going back to the book. Yes, deer combines, now working for a case tractor guy. Nothing can go wrong. A little bit of work out of Warren every once in a while. Never met a person that enjoys working in a combine bin. No flat surfaces several sharp edges and bolts oh and i grabbed the wrong right good thing i kept my trestle so this is combine number two i have both combines sitting here at the door of the shop and as i do one thing on one combine i just move over and do it to the other combine so hopefully in that aspect we don't forget anything and oh did we do it to this combine did we do it to that combine two at a time not one at a time two at a time we're back at it again today. Quit bailing because the other side over there was a little damp yet to be bailing on Friday morning. So it was a Saturday morning. Saturday morning. So now we're going again. It's Monday morning. And it may be kind of late, but we got rain in the forecast again. But you blew over in the west. Top can't decide what it wants for rain. It's saying a tenth, and then it says six tenths at 2.30 today, so we'll see. But 
bail here for a while. I need to go in and put fuel in and uh, check twine and stuff like that. So I'll go do that and grab some lunch. We'll figure out if we're going to keep going or not. But, but halfway across this field, uh, maybe not quite yet. But uh, yeah, running really good. About two bales per acre. Thinking about a ton and a half. South end, a little bit less yield. The uh, hail knocks some of the seeds off the heads. So we're losing a little weight down there, but averaging 1,400 and like 70 pounds per bale. So pretty good weight on these bales. When in doubt, always go to the book. And I think I have everything done on the combine. Still have some header stuff to do. Never a happy day when the filter turns instead of the water separator canister. You're on the bottom. That's why I use two filter wrenches. Easy cheesy lemon squeezy. Uh, this is my water separator filter. There's another filter up in the engine compartment on the side of the engine, which is the main fuel filter. A little bit of chunky stuff on the seal. It's kind of weird. valve right here so we'll just wait till fuel comes out and waiting and waiting oh by the way there's the other fuel filter on the side of the motor the one I forgot to show you to how I changed it because apparently it's not that cool and there we have fuel so we'll crack it again and slightly that. Tighten her back up. Ta-da! It's got fuel. Now we go start. The other thing the book says to do is start until and let run until it idles smoothly. But since it's hot outside, we're doing two tests. We're making sure that it idles smoothly, number one. And number two, the air conditioner is working just great. Maybe getting some storms. There's some stuff building out there for sure. Getting kind of humid. Well, humid for Montana. Well, Dad's working on skid plates here on the headers. He's taking the old factory clock one off. He's using it for, uh, for kneeling. He has metal brackets on the back here. These are the factory ones, and you take those metal brackets off, and you put them on the May West kit. And then there's a direct fit. Put the bolt in up top here, pin the back just like they were. We're ready to go cutting. You're gonna try this without taking any poly off. We'll see. <laughs> you take, take them off quick? Dad's gonna get the last couple skid plates put on. I need to do some greasing on the baler before we go back to baling tonight. Do a little more. 
Now it's coming out of there. Is there two up front? Yeah, right? there's one more from the, right. from the front there too. Well, it's pretty humid out already, so we'll see how long this lasts. But we already got uh, 23 bales made. Just cruising right along, making nice hay. A little heavier bales now that the not losing as much chaff as we were, like 1,633 pound bale. That'll work, that's a good one. Dump it, and there she goes. Well, we are creeping up on bale weight. Had a 1,700 pound bale last round, and it tested up to 15, so this is it for tonight. Getting a little damp out. Morning windmill. And look at this. Not just cup right on the baler last night. Well, I was baling for two hours. Get a pretty smooth field and a nice riding tractor. Oh, what a difference a year can make. Last year we couldn't get any dew because of the uh, drought and weather. Never got any dew to send in at night to make good hay. Last night got shut down at 10 o'clock. And it is 8 o'clock, 8.20. We'll bottom bale that came out this baler last. It's like got some 20 moisture spots in it. So pretty damp yet this morning. Guess I'll just uh, wait a few more minutes. Yeah. Mama said there'd be days like this. Well, not really. My mom was not much for inspirational quotes. Oh. A little longer. Well, it's a little too wet to bail yet, so instead of getting in trouble with wet for bales, I'm gonna go load some hay. Hay truck just showed up. project for today we're taking the augers that only fold at 95 degrees and making them fold to 135 degrees gotta pull that bolt those two and put that pin into that pin and they've even labeled them all that says 135 there's a stamp in there that says 95 and same with this plate that's attached to the outer auger is stamped also you just can't see it because it's underneath there so i did that one so i know what i'm doing now so now i can video this one and make myself look professional and yes i may have already uh loosened that one but it was pretty tight tony tight but i i, I got it all right guys Pretty mangled already. Oh, the joys. Well, if at first you don't succeed, just take it apart farther. You'll get it. Well, back to the yard here. Probably blow it off later and uh, get ready to build the night. 415 bales so far. Doing pretty good. I think there's 45 or so acres left, so should up with another almost 90 bales. Pretty good yield. Same story, different night. Dude's coming up. Well, humidity's coming up so far. No dew yet, but uh, as the humidity will start to soak up the leaves a little bit, the stems that are left in the seeds so they don't all fall out for the oats that we're bailing out. I forgot what we were hanging out. We'll get that bailed up. Just got back from checking the alfalfa. It is cured, 
dry as can be. Need some dew tomorrow morning. We get bailing the last of belt. And then I guess combine time. Another beautiful sunset. Smashing hay. There's going to be a lot of bales out here. Probably going to end up with about 950 on this 600 acres here at home. A little less than 600 acres even. I'll take it. There's the last window of the oat hay. Good time. Don't forget, plan hard, pray harder. See you next video.